Hello, friends. After our deep dive into the history of the Kubelwagen, there was no way we could ignore its closest relative, the Volkswagen Schwimmwagen Type 166, a vehicle that went even further in functionality and became the most produced amphibious car in human history. This wasn't just an improved Kubelwagen. The Schwimmwagen emerged exactly where the Wehrmacht faced the harshest challenges of the war. Places with no roads, destroyed bridges, flooded riverbanks, and the endless swamps of the Eastern Front. And the story begins back in 1940. At that moment, Germany was preparing for Operation Celian, the planned invasion of Great Britain. For such an operation, the military needed a light, simple, highly mobile vehicle capable of crossing beaches, canals, marshes, and rivers without pontoon bridges or engineering support. It was then that Ferdinand Porsche received an official request to create a vehicle that could drive where no roads existed and float where every other vehicle would stop. His son, Ferry Porsche, joined the project as well. The early prototype was designated Type 128, and after a long series of trials and redesigns, it evolved into the production model Type 166. The result was something truly unique, a compact, lightweight, brilliantly engineered, amphibious vehicle that the German army quickly recognized as one of its most effective tools on the most difficult parts of the front. At first glance, the Schwimmwagen looks like nothing more than a Kubelwagen with a boat-shaped hull. But its true brilliance lies in the engineering decisions that were revolutionary for their time. The first prototype, the Type 128, used a long wheelbase inherited from early Volkswagen models. It could float, yes, but it had one critical flaw. On rough terrain, the hull tended to crack, especially along the weld seams. For an amphibious vehicle, even a small crack could be fatal. One leak was enough to sink it. The solution was a completely redesigned model, the Type 166, shorter, more compact, far stronger, and perfectly balanced for use both on land and in water. To achieve exceptional off-road capability, Porsche's engineers used two key innovations. First, a selectable 4x4 system. Unlike the rear-wheel drive Kubelwagen, the Schwimmwagen featured a four-wheel drive mode. The driver activated it manually, and it engaged only in first gear and in reverse. That was all it needed to pull itself out of deep mud or climb up a soft riverbank. Second, portal axles. These raised the ground clearance to an impressive 26 centimeters, a huge advantage for such a light vehicle. This allowed the Schwimmwagen to pass through deep ruts glide over mud, cross uneven ground with stability, and outperform most other light vehicles off-road. It was small, but mechanically brilliant. Under the rear hatch sat Volkswagen's familiar 1.131-liter air-cooled flat-four engine. It produced only 25 horsepower, but for a vehicle weighing just 910 kilograms, it was more than enough. Type 166 also received several modifications essential for amphibious work. Two 25-liter fuel tanks placed in the front for improved buoyancy. A redesigned air intake to prevent water ingestion. A high, extended exhaust routed above the engine to avoid flooding. And additional sealing of all mechanical components and ventilation channels. These improvements turned the Schwimmwagen into a true military amphibian, not just a car that happened to float. Its only real competitor was the American Ford GPA, the amphibious Jeep. On paper, the GPA looked superior, bigger, heavier, more powerful. But in the field, the story was very different. The Schwimmwagen outperformed the GPA in every category that mattered for an amphibian. Better performance in mud, better traction in snow, much more capable on sand, higher maneuverability in forests, easier exits from water onto soft banks, fewer issues with leaks and water ingress, and unlike the GPA, it didn't dive nose first into waves. American field tests repeatedly reported the GPA's problems in mud, soft riverbanks, and fast flowing rivers. In the same conditions, Captured Schwimmwagens proved far more reliable, something U.S. engineers themselves acknowledged. Many American units willingly reused captured Schwimmwagens, repainting them olive green and marking them with white stars. 
The real magic began in the water. Just before entering a river, the driver manually lowered a three-bladed propeller mounted at the rear. Once locked into its operating position, it engaged with the engine crankshaft through a mechanical gear clutch, giving the Schwimmwagen a water speed of up to 10 kilometers per hour. Steering in the water was done using the front wheels, which acted like rudders. And if the engine ever failed, every vehicle came with a paddle, just in case you found yourself drifting in the middle of a river. Compact, watertight, incredibly agile, with portal axles, 4x4, four four, and a reliable propulsion system. These were the qualities that made the Schwimmwagen indispensable on the Eastern Front, where it would face the harshest tests of the war. Production of the Schwimmwagen Type 166 began in 1942. By the summer of 1944, when the Fallersleben factory was shut down due to heavy Allied bombing, a total of 14 276 series production vehicles had been built. If we include all prototypes, pre-production units, and unfinished hulls that never reached the front, the total number of Porsche amphibious vehicles exceeds 15 500. The Schwimmwagen quickly became a favorite among reconnaissance units, engineer detachments, and frontline officers. In many formations, it even replaced the BMW R75 motorcycle with sidecar, which performed far worse in deep mud and snow. So why did the Schwimmwagen reveal its full potential on the Eastern Front? Because in many regions, roads simply didn't exist. During spring and autumn, the infamous Rasputitsa turned the landscape into a nightmare. Roads dissolved into deep mud. Makeshift bridges were washed away. Trucks and armored vehicles bogged down within meters. The Schwimmwagen, however, remained mobile, even when everything else stopped. It was used for ferrying reconnaissance teams across rivers without the need for pontoons, transporting radios and messengers, carrying officers between frontline positions, rapidly evacuating the wounded, bypassing enemy positions through swamps and marshland. It was a true floating all-terrain vehicle, giving German units a significant tactical advantage wherever terrain became the enemy. Despite its clever engineering, some Schwimmwagens suffered from water tightness issues. The reason, however, was not mechanical. At the Volkswagen factory in Wolfsburg, thousands of French and Italian forced laborers worked under terrible conditions, and many engaged in quiet acts of resistance by sabotaging weld seams on the hulls. Post-war examinations revealed vehicles with intentionally incomplete welds, the very machines that tended to flood and sink far more often. This detail adds a tragic, deeply human layer to the history of the Schwimmwagen, a reminder that even the finest engineering could not escape the realities of war. The Allies quickly recognized how practical the Schwimmwagen was. Captured vehicles were repainted olive green, marked with white stars, and put back into service for patrols and communication duties. The irony of history is striking. American units often scrapped their own Ford GPA amphibians, yet gladly used captured German Schwimmwagens instead. After the war, the Schwimmwagen didn't disappear. Its durability and simplicity allowed it to find a second life in civilian roles, as firefighting vehicles, police cars, and even hunting machines including the well-known Jagdwagen, used by the Porsche family, where its amphibious ability made it ideal for crossing swamps and wetlands. Despite the large wartime production, only around 180 original Schwimm wagons are known to survive today, and only a handful remain in unrestored, original condition. This rarity makes the Schwimm wagon one of the most valuable Volkswagen vehicles of the Second World War, and a prized exhibit for any military museum. Volkswagen's Schwimmwagen is more than just a machine. It is a symbol of wartime engineering ingenuity, a vehicle shaped by military necessity, marked by sabotage, and respected even by those who fought against it. It proved that with the right ideas, even a small engine and a simple design could conquer terrain that stopped almost everything else. What do you think about this floating all-terrain vehicle? Would you like to see one in action? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more stories about legendary military machines.